Welcome everyone to this live training. First one of 2020, baby, here we go. And uh, we're kicking things off with a bang with a training with my man, Brian Diaz on how to crack the code with AdWords, how to get better quality leads, more of them without having to sift through so much chaff to find those golden convertible deals. We're gonna show you the new way, the better way, the more effective way to start doing online lead generation using Google AdWords at a fraction of the cost of what you might consider to be a typical AdWords customer acquisition cost. So really excited to share this with you. This is Doran Aldana, MortgageMarketingCoach.com, coming at you live here. And we're just about to get started. So let me just give you guys a quick introduction. Frankly, I've known Brian for quite some time. Uh, we actually go way back to probably in the, somewhere between 2006, 2007, before the meltdown. He's gonna tell his story, so I don't wanna steal his thunder, but he's a very adept marketer. Uh, he's been in the mortgage space for quite some time. The mortgage meltdown was a big shakedown for many, uh, certainly him included. He had quite a uh, empire that got impacted by that meltdown when it hit. And um, he was actually teaching people in the mortgage space, just like I was way back in the day, 2006, I think somewhere in that range. I haven't uh, asked Brian prior to going on the recording with this, the exact dates, but that's my, my hazy recollection. It was somewhere in the 2006, 2007 area. Uh, and it. so, yeah. And so, you know, he, he's actually always on my radar cause he was doing some wicked marketing. He had some excellent SEO. Uh, he was always showing up at the top for the, the keywords. I was like, dang, that Brian Diaz guy, he's a badass. What's he doing? So I was kind of, he didn't probably know it at the time, but I was kind of cyber snooping on him, seeing what he was up to, seeing what he was doing, opting into his stuff. And, uh, he always had my respect right from day one. The guy was very adept and uh it was evident by everything he did and uh and then the meltdown hit and he's going to tell his story of kind of how things have evolved over the the last uh, decade and a half so i'm not going to give too much details but anyway about a year and a half two years ago uh he came back into uh into the fold and got back on my radar we hadn't talked or you know been in correspondence for quite some time but uh and we literally probably had a decade where we just weren't in connection because he went on his path, I went on mine. But we had a connection because I interviewed him, you know, literally did a guest expert interview with him. So we were like, you know, not just associates from afar. We actually had a, a connection on that interview. And then we had this uh, opportunity to reconnect because he got back in the mortgage space and he started becoming a client of mine, rebooting his mortgage business. And uh, all of a sudden now about three, maybe four, five, six, 12 months later, forgive my hazy recollection, but it was probably about six to 12 months after he started working with me to help him get his business uh, rocking and rolling again, because he'd been out of the business for quite some time. Uh, he started telling me about what he was doing with Google AdWords. And the moment he started dropping his numbers, my jaw pretty much dropped to the floor because I'd never heard of AdWords working before for the small guys in the mortgage space. It's usually the big, dumb mortgage companies that have million dollar budgets and that frankly don't mind blowing through money without really tracking their ROI like we do. And so I was thinking, AdWords, you gotta be kidding me. You're gonna be spending like 300 bucks per lead and uh, you're, you're gonna get the same kind of chaff that you're gonna get in any other online lead generation channel. But then he was telling me how he got 120 leads, he got nine pre-approvals, he got two deals closing and several more forthcoming for like just over 200 bones. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Can that really be for real? And he was generating leads for just over a buck, like a buck 70 or something a piece. So I was like, dude, you got to tell me a little more what you're doing and how are you doing it? And the more he was telling me about it, the more I realized, you know what? This is the kind of thing we need to be proactive and preemptive about in terms of how we can get it ahead of the curve with online lead generation for 2020 because things are always evolving. Things are always changing. And if you're not growing, you're dying. And frankly, you become a replaceable commodity and you become redundant and you get blown past by other people who are more progressive if you're just drifting instead of driving. So I kind of uh, rattled Brian's chain a little bit and say, hey, dude, what if we were to get on a webinar and share with our community exactly what you're doing so that you know other people can get up on the 21st century 
2020 version of online lead generation because frankly, as far as I'm concerned, if you guys aren't in on this new way of doing online lead generation, you're very much apt and prone to get left in the dust because this is the best quality pay-per-click lead generation you can get. These people are actually searching you out for a mortgage. They're looking for a mortgage. They're not just scrolling on their phones. And the fact that Brian has cracked the code on this and has been able to do that so that you guys don't have to, skin in his knees so you don't have to, trial and error so you don't have to, is a huge leg up for you. And that's why we're doing this webinar, to give you the leg up with his uh, you know, proven uh, map and his proven plan and his proven system so that you guys don't have to mess around doing it the hard way, trying to reinvent the wheel, figuring out all this stuff yourself because he's done it for you. And therein lies the reason why we're doing this webinar. And I'm so grateful and thankful and blessed to have Brian uh, oblige and say, yeah, man, I'll do it. And we've actually decided before even launching this webinar, you know what? We're actually gonna do a beta test for a few people, a few select people who want to partake. We're going to do a beta test to replicate the same system, the same proprietary system that Brian put together for three people at the end of this webinar. So uh, this is not just about just information. This is about transformation and helping you guys actually have this put in place in your business from A to Z, plug and play, stick the key in the ignition, drive away. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the man, the one and only Brian Diaz. Brian, so grateful you're here, brother. Thanks for hanging with us today. Thanks for having me, Doran. Thank you for such a great intro too. The cool thing about the story is it's a true story and uh, I'm so grateful to have our paths cross again after all these years and I'm so blessed to have the opportunity now to platform what you've been doing because you are one innovative mofo and uh, that's going to be quite evident as you share your story today the innovation the evolution of brian diaz so i'm just gonna let you grab the baton and run with it brother and uh if i see need for questions or clarification i'll, I'll jump in from time to time but i'll let you run with it awesome okay cool all right so i got a lot to cover so i'm gonna move pretty quick i'm a new yorker i drink a lot of caffeine I also had some Robitussin, so I'm feeling pretty groovy. Uh, if I <laughs> talk too fast that you can't understand me, just holler out. I don't see the chat, but Doran will jump in and kind of clarify anything that I didn't cover properly, and he'll, he'll drag me back where to make sure that every you understand everything before I'm done. Uh, cool all right, so, so we're talking about um, generating mortgage leads without Facebook. So what the plan is here to cover in the next 60 minutes is how we're going to generate a never-ending stream of motivated buyers so you can stop wasting time with Facebook tire kickers. And you know what I'm talking about. If you're generating leads with, with Facebook, you know, you're spending about like two thirds of your day just trying to talk to people that, you know, are interested in buying a house, kind of, sort of, you know, don't know if they're qualified. They're not really actively looking, but they're interested in it, you know, so you have to go sift through a lot of people to find the one or two that might be a good deal. Uh, where to buy exclusive mortgage leads with high closing ratios for less money than you're probably paying now. Um, and I'll show you how that's working for me. And um, how to avoid the dreaded Facebook ban. If you're not familiar, and I'll explain to you what's, what's happening with Facebook in just a moment. Uh, I've lost three Facebook accounts over the past two years. Um, I've been working with, I have two mentors that you know do over a million dollars a month in Facebook traffic. Um, so they, what they've been explaining to me from their people on the inside is that these bans are going to be coming down more and more regularly. Um, and I'll explain to you what's causing the ban and show you how you can avoid it. Okay, and a special bonus, if you stay to the end of the presentation, I'm going to give you my eight-word email that reactivates all leads. And when you see this eight-word email, you get it, you'd be like, duh, of course that makes sense, you know, but just trust me, if you do it, if you send it, if you got a database of like, you know, a couple of thousand people that had contacted you in the past about financing and they just fell off 60, 90 days ago, send them this eight-word email, you'll be amazed. I, I'm talking about a 60% response rate that you can reactivate um, old leads. It works awesome. Okay, so for none of you know me, so my name is Brian Diaz. I'm a certified media buyer. I'm the owner of US Credit Advocate. Uh, it's a credit repair company. I was like the first paper deletion credit repair company in the US. I'm a best selling author. I have one bestseller on Amazon. I'm a licensed mortgage and loan originator. I'll tell you the story about how that came to be because it, um, it wasn't intentional. Uh, and I'm also a US Army vet. I live in New York with my wife and two kids. If you're not familiar with the people that you see in front of you, on the top left, that's me and Matt Serra. He's the former UFC welterweight champ of the world, one of my best friends. Uh, and next to me on that top picture, that's Greg Glassman with me. Greg Glassman is the founder and CEO of uh, CrossFit. On the bottom left, that is me standing on top of a, of a castle in Haiti where I was deployed for Uphold Democracy. Next to that, that's my first mentor, Dan Kennedy. He recently passed away, so rest in peace. And that's me and my family in that bottom picture there. So it's cool first... that we have so many uh, so many common connections because uh, we share similar influences, uh, Dan Kennedy being one of my uh, 
big influences as a marketer earlier in my career, and I'm a big UFC fan, so I, I am uh, very much <laughs> aware of Matt Serra and his awesomeness and taking out GSP. So just between you and me, brother, we got uh, more more in common than uh, perhaps you knew, but uh, it's very cool to see the the connection and the commonalities there. Awesome, yeah. Matt is, uh, Matt is truly um, inspirational. If you, if you understand his journey, yeah, we'll get into it sometime. But to, to go through that journey with him, he was about to lose his UFC contract when he won the Ultimate Fighter and got a title shot. 11-1 to 1 underdog, underdog, and he wins and beats George St. Pierre. Today, he's still considered pound to pound, one of the best in the, who ever done it. I mean, it's, a, it's an awesome story. Yeah, no doubt, man. We're going to have to get together <laughs> on the East Coast or when you come out on the West Coast and uh, we'll have a bevy and talk about it. <laughs> well, if you come out to New York, I'll introduce you to him. Awesome, man. I'd love that. I would absolutely love that. All right, brother. I won't steal your thunder no longer, but I thought I'd mention that. <laughs> oh. All right. So my first confession is I'm a, I'm a three-time failure. I've built and lost $3 million businesses. Um, they say it takes like, you know, most most multimillionaires ha have filed for bankruptcy at least like two times before they actually make it. I, I, apparently I subconsciously program myself that I have to duplicate that process and, and I'm doing it the hard way. Try, um, to, try to fulfill the prerequisites, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to fail time. I fail big. So each one of the businesses I had had one thing in common. I was able to uh, generate exclusive motivated leads on command. The first time I did it is in uh, in the mortgage industry. I left being a stockbroker after 9-11. Shortly after that, a friend of mine talked me into coming in to do mortgages. At that time, everybody was calling internet leads, but it was new, like the, the mortgage market had only just started to pick up steam. So there wasn't as much competition calling those same internet leads. So me being an ex-stockbroker, I would jump on the phone for an hour and sell five loans and go home. Within six months, I was, uh, I was making so much money that I ended up opening up my own office. Now, when all my friends were buying you know, cars and, and expensive clothes and that type of thing, I took my money and I invested in myself. I started looking for uh, mortgage marketing programs. Uh, I found this guy, Scott Tucker, on his, on his webpage, he mentioned that he learned everything he knew, he knew from Dan Kennedy. So I went and bought every book that Dan Kennedy had. Among them was a book on copywriting. So I, wrote, I learned how to write sales letters. I st started mailing sales letters to uh, subprime borrowers. And for every thousand letters I would mail, I'd get about 20 good deals. I would cherry pick about five that I would do myself. I charged four or five points on every deal. And in New York, you know, the average loan size was like 500,000. So I didn't have to work hard, maybe 20 hours a week. And the rest of them I gave to my, the team of loan officers in my, in my company. Um, so it was basically because while everyone else was calling internet leads and competing against each other and cutting each other's throats and, and, and commissions, trying to grab those deals, I had like basically a fence around my customers. No one else was soliciting to them, soliciting them. They were contacting me, so they were reaching out to me. I was in the position of power, right? That's how it started. Obviously, the meltdown happened, and I wasn't able to I wasn't able to adapt to the mortgage industry. I ended up going in a different direction, which I'll get to in a second. While I was doing mortgages, uh, the next thing I did was I got into real estate flipping. And the way I did that was what I would do is I would send a fax blast. I got a list of all the fax numbers for all the mortgage companies in my area. And I'd send them a fax blast offering them $5,000 for their dead deals. Generally speaking, if you couldn't finance somebody back in, the, you know, before the mortgage meltdown, if you couldn't finance somebody, they were in bad shape, right? That means they must've had like really bad credit because back then you could get a 100% financing with 580 credit score. So they have to be like on the verge of bankruptcy or about to lose a house. In those instances, I would purchase the house and I'd pay the, the loan officer who referred the deal to me 5000 If I could purchase the house, I'd pay them 5000 Because no one else was contacting mortgage companies, I, I literally was, I flipped 18 houses in 11 months. Each one of those houses had a minimum of $80,000 spread. It was, it, was a, it was a great business while it lasted. Uh, now, if you try to fax companies, it's like a $1,000 fine per occurrence if they catch you, if you don't have uh, authorization. So I wasn't able to, plus they changed the laws about like equity protection and that type of thing. I got scared and I backed out. I wasn't able to, to adapt and change. When the mortgage meltdown did come, I got into, into credit repair because I was trying to protect my clients. What I thought would inevitably happen with the banking industry was that I didn't think they'd stop lending. I thought what would happen was instead of a 580 credit score for 100% financing, you need a 680 or something like that. So I was trying to protect my clients by learning how to do credit repair to improve their scores so they can still get qualified. But before long, I was so good at the credit repair that other loan officers were referring their clients to me. So I decided to close my mortgage company and do credit repair full time. That's how I adapted to the meltdown. Since I went full blast into it, I started doing pay-per-click on, on Google. Now at that time, it was only me and Lexington Law. We were the only two companies advertising on, on Google for credit repair. And I was doing you know, long form sales copy. When I tell you that I was paying like a dollar, dollar 25 per click, and we were selling 20 to 25 credit repair uh, programs a day, charging like $1,500 a pop, a pop on, a, on, a, on a payment plan. That was how we started out. 
you know, and, and after that I became like a paper deletion and I started adapting, but um, eventually uh, Google decided they didn't like my business or didn't like the way I was advertising and they banned me from buying clicks. I didn't prepare with a secondary marketing channel. So when they took away that from me, I was left without a way to, to generate business. And it was a very painful experience for me because I had people I had people that were depending on me, you know, people that were paying that I was helping supporting their families and everything. When the business went down, I, it was, it was, you know, it was a very painful experience and something, a valuable lesson I learned. I, I want to make sure that I'm able, I'm prepared to adapt to these changes moving forward. It's something I'll never let happen again. But again, in each one of these instances, I had exclusive motivated leads. I was in, I was in a, developing leads in such a way that no one else was competing for my same business. I was able to charge what I wanted to charge and I could generate as much business as I wanted at any given time. So again, the reason why I, I, I lost each one of these businesses because the market changed. You know, the mortgage meltdown came. You, you couldn't fax blast anymore. Google banned me. At that time, Google wouldn't let you start another account. It wasn't until Facebook started stealing their, their ad revenue that Google's like, oh, you, yeah, you can open up another account now. We won't ban you forever. You know? But at that time, I had no way to generate the business. So I wasn't able to adapt in those changes. Don't make the same mistakes that I did. You need to, be, you need to see these changes coming and you need to start moving and adapting so that you don't lose your ability to, to provide for your families. Okay, changes that are coming to Facebook this year. So first of all, if you're not aware, if you haven't been paying attention, Facebook costs are increasing. Since 2016, the average cost per click is up 59%. And the numbers that I'm gonna show you for what I'm doing on Google, those, are, those were during the holiday season. So a higher, you know, you pay generally a higher cost per click because there's less inventory, there's less advertising inventory because there's so many companies that are, that are advertising trying to take advantage of the holiday sales. Those uh, increased click values, I don't believe they're going to go down in 2020. Uh, one of my mentors was, was we're talking about in 2020, we have another presidential election. So the Republicans and Democrats in the United States, they have very deep pockets. They're going to be spending a lot of money for, for attention on the internet, which is going to keep the cost per click up very high in, in 2020. So don't expect Facebook costs to come down anytime soon is my point. Um, the second thing is Facebook has begun shutting down ad accounts. The, the way I can best explain this is there's a lot of people that are advertising on Facebook for the first time that don't really have a background in advertising. They don't understand how this works. Facebook, you're not the client. As an advertiser, even though you're giving money to Facebook, you're not the client. They don't care about you. They care about the users. It's the user experience is everything to Facebook. That's the only thing they care about. Because if users stop logging in, then they have no eyeballs to sell advertisements to. Right. So the, the, the customer is the free members that, that are there, the people that, that log in, not the people who are spending money. So when you give a bad experience to somebody who's, who's uh, on Facebook, if they're scrolling, looking at pictures of a cat, and then they see uh, an advertisement offering something that they're interested in, and then they click on that, and they get sent to a squeeze page where they have to put their name and email address or, or give some information before they can get the solution that they were looking for that was advertised to them, that makes them upset, and they report it to Facebook. And if you get enough negative reports on your account, Facebook bans you, period. This happened to me three times, three different accounts, possible to get around it, but it's really not worth it. And it's, it's really like a huge headache, especially when your income is depending on you know, your, your ability to advertise. You don't want to play that game. So you have to give Facebook what they want. You have to make sure that your advertisement is, is developed in the way that, that makes Facebook happy, makes the customer happy. If you haven't banned yet, if you're doing something like I just suggested, if your page doesn't have a privacy policy, if, uh, if you're violating any one of a number of the, uh, of the privacy policy or advertising rules, if you're sending people to a squeeze page, or a survey instead of actually giving them the content that you're provide that you're promising, it might not have happened yet, but it will happen soon. It will come down at you. Um, also, if, uh, in the United States, there's a new Privacy Act that that California just initiated that went into effect on January 1st. I happen to know of attorneys that specialize. They live in California. What they do is they go to corporate websites. Right now, they're focusing primarily on big companies. But they go to their websites, they give their name and email address, and then they start requesting information on what they're doing, what information they captured, what they're doing with that information from the corporation. And if the corporation can't respond to them within 30 days, providing exactly the information they requested, it becomes a lawsuit. And they specialize in doing this. What they do is they have people set up various different accounts on the de different e emails, and they're just they're flooding them with requests for what, what you know, under the Privacy Act. So if you're advertising, especially in California, and you're not prepared to handle that Privacy Act, you're going to spend all your money defending yourself in court before you know it, because other, other attorneys are going to be jumping on the bandwagon. It's just an easy way for them to make money. Obviously, with, with anything else, though, you know, some people see uh, some people see like the, the, the negative, the downside. But that means for me, there's opportunity because I'm able, you know, if, you're, if you're positioned to adapt to these coming changes, you're going to be in a position where you, like I said, have no, you have exclusive 
uh, exclusive leads that you can generate on, on demand. No one else is competing for them. There's less people in the market in general. So that makes it much easier for you to make money. So here's why I use Google, right? Google is just better than Facebook. First of all, and this is really the most important thing. When someone goes to Google, people are searching for a solution on Google, right? And you have a problem. I have, uh, my, my, my child has a fever. My, my child won't, you know, my, my three-year-old wouldn't take medicine the other day. I go on, on Google. I'm like, how to get a, a three-year-old to take medicine? I search on Google. I'm trying to look for a solution. I need a solution right then and there. I could go on Facebook and I could ask my friends, hey, my, my kid doesn't want to does it take, take our medicine? How can I do it? And I could ask for referrals from people on Facebook, but you can't advertise. You, you know, you can't target somebody who's asking questions on Facebook. It doesn't work that way. There's no keyword to go after on Facebook. On Google, you can literally target keywords and keywords are people actively searching for a solution to a problem. The other thing is, these are just ways that, that you know, why, why Google is just a, a better in, in general. So Facebook only has about 230 million members, whereas Gmail alone has 1.2 billion. It's five times bigger. Google covers 98% of the web, whereas Facebook, it's just one site. And Google can do all the same things that, that Facebook can do. They have custom audiences, lookalike audiences, retargeting, all the same thing. And you can also start with just five bucks a day, just like on Facebook. I didn't plan to manage my lead generation for my mortgage business. I was kind of forced to take over. Okay? I already had enough on my plate. The reason why I got back into the mortgage business, I was doing well with credit repair until you know, I had that issue with Google and then I moved over to Facebook eventually, started advertising on Facebook. I lost three accounts in a row. I said, okay, I have to start getting referrals from loan officers. So I, I reached out to some friends and they, they had me come in. They said, why don't you have a desk here in this mortgage bank and, and we'll give you all the credit repair business. I said, okay, cool. And they said, well, the only way you can have a desk here is you have to have a license first. So I went and got my license. But now that I have my license, what am I going to do? Just sit here and not use my license? Of course, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to you know, do something with my license. I'm not one to try to reinvent the wheel. So I reached out to my friend, Doran. I said, Doran, I need help, man. I got to get my business up and running. I got some, some referrals coming in, some credit repair clients, whatever, but I need, to, I need to scale my business up. I need to go bigger. Doran said, I got you. So Dor I went through Doran's program. And, and like many of you, I was turned on to someone who could help me with my with Facebook marketing that I could use to then leverage to get into my real estate agents, right? So cool. I was happy to pay him the money because I already know this is a headache. It's a, it could be a big headache handling your, your, your advertising. There's so many changes. At that time, Facebook was announcing that you know, anything housing, employment, or credit related, you couldn't, you had, they couldn't lose filters anymore. So you couldn't target zip codes. You couldn't target ages, age ranges. So once they started announcing, I said, well, I don't, want to, I don't want to deal with any of that. But what I noticed was that the companies that were doing the mortgage marketing, they didn't even notify. They didn't, they didn't address the fact that these changes were coming. They didn't, you know, generally I would think they would say something like, hey, this, this change is going on. We need to change our advertising. No, nothing was said. So I, I, I watched and sure enough, a lot of them started getting their accounts banned. They lost their accounts. So I said, shoot, I got to get my, my business up and running. So I got to get back, you know, I got to start handling my own, my own mortgage marketing. So I went to, to Facebook like, like the, the rest of you. I go onto Facebook and I reach out to, like I said, I've been doing internet marketing since 2005. And over that time, I've made some friends that are, you know, huge media buyers. They do millions of dollars, like not millions, but over a million dollars a month on, on Facebook each. So these guys are, you know, my friends, but my mentors also. I, I take their classes when they tell me to do something, I do it. So they explained to me that Facebook really hates it when you drive people to a squeeze page. It, more than anything else, that's one of the fastest things that can get your account uh, banned. So they said what they, what the Facebook wants is they want content. You have to give them content. Just like if you were, you know, uh, searching around on, on Forbes or something like that and you see a, an advertisement, you click on that, they're not going to take you to squeeze page. There's going to be an article there. Then that article, if you so choose, might suggest you go to another page and give your information to, to, to request more information. That's what Facebook wants to see as well. So I followed their advice and I, an, I built an authority site and I started driving traffic to that, to that page. And I was doing well. Uh, at first I was doing, this was a, a Facebook compliant campaign. I was getting uh, opt-ins um, opt at $2.41 each, All right? So it was doing well, but I mean, you guys probably have a lot of experience with this. I'm not a big fan of Facebook ads. First of all, people aren't actively looking for a mortgage. So maybe they had a conversation about, you know, they, they don't want to rent anymore and they're, they're, you know, they had that in the back of their mind, but they're not actively looking for a solution. So what happens is you end up talking all day long to people who are researching the potential uh, possibility of buying a house one day. So not only do you have to go through them, then you have to find the ones who actually qualify. And of those that are qualified, who's ready to move now? So I literally spend hours every single day. It got to the point that after five months, I was so burnt out with Facebook leads, I was starting to ignore them. Like I'd get a text you know, a text message from somebody asking for information. I didn't even want to respond to it anymore. I'm like, I, I, I'm a, I was really over it. I was done with it. I was burnt. I needed a break. So I complained to one of my mentor friends and he said, you know, you got to get over to Google. And I resisted, right? I was 
probably others, anyone else would, if you think about you know, what you know about Google. First of all, I went and did some research real quick, $72 a click for, for a mortgage related keyword, that's crazy. And then I work for a mortgage bank where you know, the, the attorneys are constantly all over me for if I send an email, you know, it's much less advertisements. And do I really wanna build another business where I'm still doing the same thing that I was doing on Facebook? I'm spending my whole day talking to people who maybe wanna get a house one day and if they qualify, they just want, they want me to answer their questions but they don't actually wanna give me the documents I need. But like, you know, I'm just really a glorified customer service person, right? I don't know if you really see this. I did the keyword search for, for mortgages, right? So this one says, um, the one that's highlighted here in the middle, it says best VA loan lenders. That's $72, $72 for, for Quicken Wholesale, it's $500 per click. For Wells Fargo Mortgage, it's uh, $91 per click. So, I mean, Veterans Home Loans, $68 per click. So, you know, these are the, the top most expensive uh, clicks, pay-per-click for, for um, mortgage-related keywords. I'm like, this is going to be a really competitive, really expensive market to get in. But using what I learned from my mentors uh, and staying with that whole, you know, providing content and solving a problem and using an authority site and that type of thing, I saw ads and I got down to $1.78 per lead. That's 63 cents that I uh, cheaper than what I was paying on Facebook. And you can see this actual screenshot, right? The bottom one is, is search, people searching for a solution. The one above that where I'm paying $5 a conversion, a $6 conversion, that's retargeting it. And the reason why this happens is Google has a formula. Just because you pay more doesn't mean you can get to the top of, of, of AdWords. They will give somebody who, whose page, whose landing page is more relevant and gives a better user experience, they'll give them a higher quality score. And the higher your quality score, the less you have to pay per click to be competitive on that first page. So because my pages are, are making them, making the, the visitor, the people who are clicking is making them happy, giving them a better experience. And the way they can tell that is how long they're spending on the page and if they're, if they're clicking through the next page, that type of thing. Uh, because I'm giving them a better user experience, my clicks are significantly cheaper. Second thing is with compliance. Like I said, the attorney here from the day I started, I, I, think, I think the guy secretly hates me because I give him so, so much work to do because he's constantly staying, you know, has, he has to stay on top of me because I'm always pushing the boundaries. But it makes them happy that my strategy, I'm not actually advertising for mortgages. I'm driving traffic to articles that I've written on authority sites that I've built that provide complimentary services. So just to give you a, a for example, so this is a, a website called The Spruce. This article is called Five Best Ways to Pay for Your Home Remodel Project. Credit cards, hard money, that kind of stuff. So you can, you can drive, you know, people who, who come to visit this page, they are interested in, in remodeling their home and they're good candidates for a loan. And if I can get them to give me their information, I can then offer them, say, hey, I can, I can refer you to a, a loan officer that, might, that, can, that can give you a quote. I can, I can send them to an affiliate offer for, you know, for credit cards, what, what have you. All I have to do is capture the information. This person is a candidate for a home loan. And, and it's just my, my automated follow-up system from there that kind of filters out the ones that are good for lending. And now the third one, this was like the, 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 probably the biggest deal to me. Did I really want to keep wasting my life way filtering out bad leads? Because I was seriously burnt out. So this is what happened when I started running my ads in November. I got 120 leads. It was eight pre-approved uh, and, and two are in contract. The other six are pre-approved and looking for houses. I actually got an email the other day that we have offers in. So hopefully like two more of those are coming in this week. I had more pre-approved borrowers in my pipeline from one month of Google ads than I had from five months of Facebook ads. When I tell you that it is not uncommon for me to get an email from somebody that I've never spoken before and all their documents are attached, that, that happens. It's not uncommon for people to actually call me from the email they received from me saying, hey, I want to come in with my, with my documents. Uh, I wanna, you know, I'm looking to buy a house. Like these people, it's a completely different frame, frame of mind. They are looking to purchase a house. They're not playing around. It's not like they were looking at cat pictures before and, and happen to see your ad. They were looking because they have a problem and they need to fix it. Yeah, Brian, I think one of the reasons why that's the case, and I think people intuitively know this to be true, one of the principles of marketing is we don't want to create desire. We don't want to create demand. We want to channel it. It's a whole lot easier to channel pre-existing demand than it is to create it. Creating demand is kind of like Facebook because they're not actually looking. We're trying to stop them. We're trying to interrupt their pattern, stop them from scrolling and get them interested in something they weren't probably that interested in before. So we're, we're kind of creating interest in that respect. Whereas with Google, we're just channeling pre-existing interest that's already there. Someone's already hot for what we got when it comes to getting a loan and buying a house and getting approved for a mortgage. So I think that's uh, the, the most game-changing shift in this whole strategy in using AdWords is we're channeling pre-existing demand with people who are hot for what you got as opposed to creating demand. And that is indeed a game-changer as your results are a testament of. Right. And, and, and I'm not saying you shouldn't use Facebook. I'm simply saying that 
Facebook is more of a long-term game. You will get some people, you know, by, by the, the rule of averages, you will get some people who are ready to buy a house now. It's just you're going to get much more of them on Google than you will on Facebook. I predominantly use Facebook for retargeting because you can stay in front of them because everybody checks on Facebook all day long. So I've already found out. They've already Google searched. So I know that their, their pain is current. So now retargeting on Facebook is awesome. All right, that's that's a, a better way, in my opinion, to use Facebook. You should still use Facebook, but Facebook, like I said, is more of a long-term game for me. Yeah, and <laughs> we want to build stability through diversification. So rather than having one trick pony and hoping that one pony stays healthy and happy, we want to have multiple ponies we're riding at the same time so that if any of them get sick or, heaven forbid, they die, we're still well diversified. And that's uh, another reason why we're doing this webinar today is to build that stability through diversification. And right now, with what Brian's doing, obviously, the quality of the lead, the conversion of the lead and the cost of a lead gives you a very optimal ROI. And that's a big reason why we're doing this webinar. Exactly. Yeah. And as, as I can attest, having just one marketing channel, can it, having that pulled out from under you can totally you know, like ruin the next decade of your life. So you don't, you don't want to be like me, learn from my mistakes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Take, take his arrows in his back so you don't have to take arrows in your back. Yes, sir. Okay, so in the past hour, we've covered the new privacy laws. Uh, about the new privacy laws, I'm actually in the process of working with a company that is developing software that's going to automate the process for responding to privacy requests. Um, so that's how we're adapting to that. <clears throat> we also covered how to deal with the rising prices on Facebook. Predominantly, I only use them for retargeting, um, so I'm not so much concerned. You know, uh, retargeting, you get a better return on your investment anyway. Uh, I'm not saying not to use them, but I would definitely use them more of a, of a long-term game if I'm going to focus the majority of my uh, my advertising budget, it's, it should be on people that want to do business now. How to keep your account from getting banned. Uh, I do not recommend sending people to a squeeze page. You want to put what's called a bridge page in between, give them the opportunity to have their question answered and let them voluntarily request the next step. How to stop spending hours a day talking to tire kickers. Again, if you're doing your majority of uh, investment on, on Facebook, then that's what you're doing now. Where to find motivated buyers, go to where they're looking for help and where to buy cheap exclusive leads. It's not as scary as it looks. So if it's okay with you guys, can I share with you how we can, how we can kind of make this process easier for you? Yeah, g guys, give us a little shout out. We're checking your pulse, see if you're still alive here. If you like, we'd like to learn about how we can put this to practice in your business. If you like some insight and some counsel from Brian on how to apply this, because obviously you don't get paid on knowing it, you get paid on doing it. Give us a shout out in the chat. We want to hear from you. Just give us a yes with an exclamation point or a hell no. If that's not of interest to you, that you can do the alternative, hell no or a hell yes. We want to just hear from you. Uh, Ariana said yes. Sherry said yes. Scott Davis says all in the execution. Money Man said you bet. Aline says yes, please. Chris said let's do it. Larry said still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Kelly said yes, please. Trevor said yes. So we got an avalanche of yeses here. Okay, cool. So this is how I, I cracked the AdWords cards. So first, you, you need to build a custom authority site. What well, what is an authority site? Let's let's cover that real quick. All right. Um, author, an authority site is when you're when you're searching around on the internet and you're searching for a solution to a problem. The ones that generally come up naturally, SEO, like the the ones that come up first, it's because there's a lot of other companies that are linking back to them because the quality of information on their website makes them an authority. Right. So that's what you're trying to duplicate. You want to become some a, a site that other other websites will link to because the information on your site is so, the quality is so good that it, you've done the job for them that they're just like, oh, if you have a question about this, go to this site. Second, you need to build out your Google campaign. If you're not familiar with that, it's a pain in the butt. You have to get familiar with uh, uh, Google Analytics, with Google Tag Manager, Google AdWords. You, you need to be able to learn how to do all your tracking and linking so that they go from one web page to a survey form to back to another web page that you can find where your people came from um, so you can see which one of your campaigns are performing well. You need to provide valuable content that keeps the, 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 converters, the visitors there and converts them into leads, right? So you can't just hire somebody on uh, Fiverr and have them write a thousand word article and, and you know, English is their second language and they don't know anything about the, the financial system in the United States. Chances are that content's not gonna be good enough that other people are linking back to you. Managing your media buying. So just opening up an AdWords account and, and, and going through the process of like setting up your account, there's more to it than just doing an advertisement because you can lose your shirt very quickly on AdWords if you're not careful. You have to do everything from creating multiple ads, bidding on your keywords, seeing which keywords are converting, which ones aren't, split testing different ads, the landing page, seeing what combination of, 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 of ads and landing pages 
are the ones that, that are converting the best. Using those to change headlines on the landing page as well as the advertisement. There's a lot into managing the media buying, but that's a big part of the process. Optimizing the campaigns, et cetera. Also on your website, you want to have all kinds, like uh, set up like heat map tracking and recording so you can see what the visitors are doing, so you can see what the user experience is, is and see if they're, if they're dropping off because they're clicking on a picture. Maybe turn that click picture into a button that goes to a page that is you know, the objective, that type of thing. You want to ensure your web page is compliant with the, the new Privacy Act standards, uh, and you have to be able to respond to customer and queries. You have 30 days, otherwise you're going to get a uh, you get it slapped with a lawsuit. And then once you have those leads, you have to be able to add them to your to your CRM. And if you do it correctly, you do it in such a way that it warms those leads up so that they're ready to be sold once you contact them. All right. So how much does something like this cost? I love this picture because you know. When people ask me how much does stuff stuff cost, you know, the mortgages, for example, if I'm selling to a client, how, how much is it going to cost me? It's 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 not as much as I want to charge you, but it's more than you want to spend, right? So I love this picture. It's exactly what I'm trying to say. Six and nine. So to design a website, like I got these, I got these off of um off of a off of a website. Like, what's the average cost to build a website? What's the average cost to to design and program a website? Right, five thousand, ten thousand, nine thousand. And for content on the website, to hi hire a copywriter, nine thousand. Privacy policy to hire an attorney. 3,000, 5,000 to write the privacy policy. Hosting, that's legit, 500 a year. Ad copy, 250 an ad. Media planning, to hire a media planner, a media buyer, just to design your campaign for you is 10,000. And then to actually have them handle your media buying, it's 10 to 15% of your monthly ad spend. So if you're spending $10,000 a month, they're gonna take generally 15% of that for themselves as their uh, uh, management fee to handle it with usually a minimum of 2,000 a month. Now those numbers for, for a website seem a bit high because look, I know that I can hire somebody for on, on Upwork for 2,500 bucks to build me a pretty good website, but the content on it doesn't, you know, that's going to be much harder to actually build a site that converts visitors into, into quality leads. That's harder. For the past week, I've been building a website that specializes, like the, the one that I have that's converting like crazy now is for buyers. I'm working on one right now for refinances. I've been working on it for a week. I, I, I code HTML. I code uh, C++, I, I speak two languages. I, I, I'm like, I know what I'm doing with this stuff and I've been doing it for a long time. I've spent, you know, I've been, like I said, I've been advertising on, on the internet since 2005 versus 2006, something like that. And still, I mean, I've been working on this thing for a week and after a week, I, I, my first attempt might still crash and burn. My point is, yeah, you, even though you could do it for less, you, with the money and time that you invest in this, it's the equivalent at, at, a, at a bare minimum of about $10,000 worth of work for you to get this thing to try it to get it up and running, okay? And that's legit. So I would say, you know, according to their numbers, fifteen to thirty-five thousand. I say legitimately, if you did a lot of the work yourself and you and you outsourced it to some, you know, to, to someone in like the Pakistan or, or the Philippines, you can get it done for less. But with the time and energy and everything, it's legitimately a, a, at least a ten thousand dollar investment for you to get this stuff and running. And like I said, you can still probably fail. I'll probably fail on the refi one at least once before I, I, I figure it out. The alternative. So a company like Lending Tree, for example, it's ten thousand dollars to set it up. Then they charge you thirty dollars per lead, about thirty dollars. I think it's like thirty or twenty eight, something like that. Which are non-exclusive. They're selling it to like four or five other loan officers at the same time. If you happen to manage to land that deal, they get to charge a percentage of the of the of the loan that you close. So non-exclusive leads. That means you're cutting your commissions just to get the business, and then they get to take a cut for themselves. That's, you know, that's the other alternatives that you have out there. Other lead companies are even worse. I mean, they're probably selling it to like 15, 20 different loan officers, telling you that they're only selling it to, to five. And again, you're just cutting your commissions and competing against everybody else. It's not the way you want to grow your business. My intent is uh, I plan to roll this out for a $2,500 enrollment because I'm building, a, I'm doing all this stuff for you. I'm building a custom website. I'm handling all the, all the coding and the tracking and the testing and, and the, the media buying, you know, it's, it's my experience that you're that you're getting with all this, right? With a, a monthly uh, 10% of the of the monthly ad budget is my is my fee, right? So it's a minimum of 1,500. However, you get unlimited exclusive leads and you keep all your commission, right? So compare that to, for example, uh, well, Lending Tree. You know, you get to you get to charge three two two or three times more on each one of these deals than you would if you were on Lending Tree, where you have to cut your commissions with everyone else, and they're still going to take a cut of your closing. These are all yours. No one else is calling them. They're exclusive. And if that was it, it would still be a great deal. However, Dorn and I were talking about this and he said, listen, you know, it works for you, but people, you know, we, they have to, you have to show them that it works for everybody. And, and he's right, you know, Dorn's always looking out for, for, for his, his people. And I appreciate that. So we came up with this for three people only. We're going to do a thousand dollar setup plus 10% of ad spend, which is a minimum of a thousand dollars a month. What 10% of ad spend means is if you want to spend $300 
an advertisement, so like $10 a day. I'd say that the minimum you want to spend on, on advertising is $10 a day because I want to do at least one search campaign and then one retargeting campaign. That's what I, I'm seeing is getting the best results. Uh, so I would do a minimum of $10 a day. So that's $300 a month. So it'd be $1,000 plus your $300 ad spend, right? So it's whatever your ad spend is up to 10% uh, plus your, your, your uh, ad spend for the month. So to apply to get to get on to get in on the ground floor with this thing, it's a hundred dollar refundable deposit. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna apply, okay? Because again, we only open this up to three people, and I want to work with three people that really want to put in the work and 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 take that business to the next level. So to get started, you go to crackthedadwordscode.com. You're gonna put down a hundred dollar deposit, and you're gonna complete an online application. I'm gonna give you a call. We're gonna have a chat. We're gonna see if you're a good fit. And if you are, awesome. We move forward. If not, we're gonna refund the hundred dollar. Uh, application DD. Okay, so you're you're not tied to that in any way, shape, or form. Now, in my experience, in talking to other um, advertising agencies that that work with, especially with loan officers, they generally, if you if you have any experience with them, they're generally kind of irritable people, right? They they don't like answering questions, and the reason is is because in their business, they usually have a really high turnover rate. Like when someone signs up for for media buying, every three months they drop out, and the reason behind this is the media buyer thinks that their job ends when they generate the leads. And I don't see it that way. I, I see this as an opportunity. If you're willing to work with me so that we can figure out what's the best combination of advertisement to, to automation, to engagement, you know, what are you saying to them when you get them on the phone? How can we increase those conversions? If you're willing to work with me so that we can streamline that process so that everybody can get more closings, well, then I'm, I'm all for that. I don't, my job doesn't end with just generating leads for you. I want to see you have more closings. So uh, with Doran's permission, I'm creating a little private Facebook group where you can bounce your, your scripts. Like I'll share with you what I'm doing and you can share with me your scripts and what the rebuttals that you're hearing and that type of stuff. And we'll figure out a way that we can increase incrementally uh, the, the number of closings that you're getting. You know, how can we increase engagement? How can we increase um, applications? How can we increase closings in general? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna work with you above and beyond just generating the leads for you. Like I said, I'm an ex-stockbroker. I'm pretty good at sales. So I think you, know, you, you helping me with this information and giving me your feedback will help us to streamline this entire process. Yeah, I love you came up with that, Brian, because uh, obviously there's a lot of arrows that uh, you know, we need to take out of the quiver and deploy to make this thing work. And there's a lot of needles to thread to make this thing work. So I love the fact that you're really taking the end game in mind, which is having a successful campaign from start to finish and to have that be part of a community that collaborates together in a spirit of harmony and collaboration. I'm definitely going to be in that group as well. So we'll have your brain power, my brain power, and the collective uh, you know, synergy of the group serving everyone to that higher outcome because a raising tide, a rising tide raises all the boats. So uh, that's, that's going to be a huge piece, I think, in having our client success with this is working together and making sure that uh, we're coaching people to success, not just, you know, give them a pat on the back and say, here's some leads, have Adam, sweetheart, or have Adam, dude, and, uh, you know, yeah. wish for all the best. You know, this is, this is a game where you have to be adept at every step in the process from the lead gen to the lead conversion. And you drop the ball at any point and, you know, your conversion rate can drop by 200 to 300% if you don't nail those key pieces. So this is about us being in it to win it with you guys, not just about um, having a few people partake in a beta test process. We're all about helping you guys have stunning success so we can roll this out in a bigger way. And this is going to be a big part of it is working together with more of a long term mindset versus just, you know, you guys getting a pat on the back and hoping for the best. So I love that, Brian. That's that's definitely a, a big reason why I have you uh, spearheading this because you, you share the same mindset. Yeah, man. I, I can't. I, I wouldn't feel good about myself if I, if you know, if people weren't leaving after this experience, just raving about it. Yeah, man. In it <laughs> okay, to guys. win it. Let's do this. Yeah, no. uh, so if you guys are interested, again, the, the it's crackthedadwordscode.com. That's where you're gonna apply. You can fill out an application, pay a hundred dollar fully refundable application fee, uh, so that we can have a conversation. There's one of the little bonus I set up. So, like I said, I'm in the credit repair industry. I network with a lot of credit repair companies. And I posed a question recently. I said, listen, I work with, um, I have the opportunity to work with a, a bunch of, uh, of loan officers and some of them are big producers and they're, they're interested in doing a lot of internet marketing. Um, but in, in the past, in my experience, a, a good portion of the people that you speak with, especially if you're doing online marketing, they're gonna be credit declines. So would you guys be interested, would any of you be interested in a partner program where you say, let's say, uh, you know, you, the credit repair organization pays the loan officer $500 a month to help them recoup some of the marketing costs? 
if the loan officer gave you all the credit declines, whether it was generated online or otherwise, would that be like a good synergistic relationship? And then, you know, obviously long term, as those credit reports get cleaned up, they get kicked back to you and get back into your into the loan officer's pipeline. Would that be something that you guys are interested in? I had one guy said he's definitely interested. He wants to be the the, the test candidate. So for for the for, for one of the the three candidates, we're gonna get you'll have the opportunity. It's up to you if you want to, if you want to accept the opportunity to work with the credit repair program. They're gonna help you recover some of your marketing costs. So you're really only paying 500 bucks a month. And if if it goes well, then other credit repair companies will line up behind to, to you know to to take advantage of the same opportunity. So again, I'm just trying to lighten up some of your some of the risk to you because I know you know it's 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 a it's a scary thing to to start something. You know the, that you're not familiar with. So again, 500 bucks a month to, for, for marketing to, and, and to build your long-term pipeline, I think was a, is a win-win relationship for everybody. Um, so that's it. That's what I got for you. Remember, this is only for the first three people. It's a thousand dollar enrollment plus 10% of ad spend, a minimum of thousand dollars a month. So if you're doing 300 bucks a month in ad spend, that'll be 1300 dollars a month on a, on a residual. If you're closing a lot of deals and you want to scale up, then that thousand stays the same. You just increase whatever your ad spend wants to what you want it to be. Your fee will never go up when I, when I increase the, the rates. So just uh, go to cracktheadwordscode.com and fill out the application. Oh, my eight word email. So yeah, this sounds dumb, but when you try it, it freaking works ridiculous. So I got this from Dean Jackson, right? So Dean Jackson's famous because he created the first squeeze page. He's the guy who invented the squeeze page on the internet. So he's a real estate agent and he has, he has a, a podcast called Less Whiskers, More Cheese or More Cheese, Less Whiskers. That's it, More Cheese, Less Whiskers. And he talks about, it, he calls it the nine word email. I call it eight word, eight word email, but it's an NLP technique for reactivating old leads. And the way it works is you put the client's name in the subject line because that generally, generally has the uh, highest open rate. Okay, that's what works the best. If you don't, if you can't use the client's name, then question works almost as well. So just question, lowercase question, not capital. You want it to look like a friend sending you an email, okay? And then the entire email is, are you still interested in buying a house with your name, phone number? Nothing else. You don't, you don't provide any other details other than that. The reason why this works is because it creates an open loop. This is an NLP technique. People hate open loops. It's like if I ask you a question and, and then don't give you an answer, you, 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 you feel the need to, to, to close that loop. You feel the need to, you know, to take the next step. In my experience, this works best with, with uh, leads that are 60 to 180 days old. And in my experience, again, I average about a 60% response rate when I send out this email. So I only do it like once every like 30 or 60 days, uh, but you get a ton of like, if I want to do like a home buyer workshop or something like that, I'll, I'll send something like, th like this out. I do this in my credit repair business a lot. You're still interested in repairing your credit. We'll just get it and we'll get inundated with, with uh, people contacting us. And it's just like, you know, at that point shooting fish in the barrel, it's awesome. That alone will probably pay for your uh, for your your marketing budget if you if you uh, get started with the um, with the AdWords program. I'll probably pay for your average budget for the for the year just using that if you get a couple of closed loans from that. Uh, so again, the way to get started: hundred dollar refundable, hundred percent refundable uh, deposit. It's uh, crackthedadwordscode.com. You put down your hundred dollar deposit, complete an online application, and we're gonna have a chat and see if you're a good fit. If uh, if not, then I'm gonna refund uh, your your funds immediately. Uh, Dawn, is all right if we open up the Q&A? Absolutely. So a uh, question that came in was a question from Money Man. Love the uh, the branding there, brother. Money Man. He says, come again. Someone is going to pay me $500 to send them my credit declines. Maybe you can explain that a little more, Brian. Yes, sir. That's exactly how it works. So in, a, in the credit repair industry, the in any industry, really, a referral is better than a cold sale, right? So if some if you if you're referred if somebody tells you to go see a movie you're more likely to see a movie than if you know you just look like good on 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 a commercial okay so referrals are 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 the, the best thing that you can have in the credit repair industry because especially because credit repair industry has such a a bad reputation to begin with when you have uh, someone who's like working at a mortgage bank or a mortgage broker someone who's trusted financial professional says go with this person this this person is going to help you fix your credit so you can buy a house that's the best lead that a credit repair company can have. So what I what occurred to me is that um, in talking to Dor to Doran is that uh, a lot of people who are generating leads through Facebook are seeing a lot of credit declines and they're not doing anything with them. I thought that was just ridiculous. While I do have a credit repair company, I thought it'd be a conflict of interest for me to say, yeah, well, you know, we'll, we'll pay you five hundred dollars because you know it's it's it just, it just didn't seem eth ethical for me to get involved. So I opened the doors to uh, other credit repair companies that I I network with. Uh, one of them, which is a, a nationwide company said that they would be very much interested. He's an attorney as well. So a lot of these turn into uh, lawsuits. Um, when, the, when the credit repair, when the, sorry, when the credit reporting agency or the creditor doesn't comply when there's a violation, the attorney can then 
turned it into a into a lawsuit. And you know, the, the attorneys that I work with, they try they they uh, file over three hundred dollar lawsuits every year. So if you're thinking it's like you know ninety nine dollars a month, why would somebody pay me five hundred bucks to get the, these leads? Uh, they they turn them into into legal proceedings and they make you know tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So they are happy to pay you five hundred dollars to give you the, your 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 credit declines. And, and in turn, they're also gonna once they fix their credit, they push them back into you so you can close those loans as well. So if you're not partnering with a credit repair service right now, it's, that's that's crazy because there's there's com- there's companies out there that would be happy to pay you for for your referrals. Yeah, and if you could subsidize the cost of your campaign, by all means, why the heck not, right? Yeah, you they're, just want to make sure that you, that you need screen help. them. Yeah, you want to make sure that you screen them, though, because because not all credit repair services are are ethical. You know what I mean? Yeah, and if there's anyone who knows who's legit and who's not in that space, it's Brian Diaz. I mean, he's been one of the preeminent authorities in that space for a long time. So you know, if you're wanting help on that side of your business and you're wanting the best of the best to help your clients get more Mortgage ready with uh, first class, world class credit repair. Brian Diaz is your hookup. He's got you. Uh, so Kelly, just to so hopefully that that answers your question, Money Man. Uh, let us know if there's any further clarification needed, but hopefully that answers your question. Uh, another question came in from Larry. He said, uh, "How many referrals will the credit repair company expect in exchange for the 500 bucks?" They want at least five sales a month. They want to recruit their investors, just like. Yeah. They'll, they'll want to they'll want to see at least five sales a a month. Yeah, so if you send them five, if you send them five referrals and all five turn into sales, the, the credit repair company is going to be happy because they're they're breaking even on their initial investment. Referrals and all that are gravy from that point on. If you're sending over you know 20 referrals and they can't close any of them, uh, that's going to be on them. But I doubt the relationship would would last very long. So it's kind of you know you got to do a good job of of pre-selling them, getting them over to the to to the credit repair company, and they they should at least close at least five per month. And for the month of November, you had 120 leads. You had about eight or nine pre-approvals, two closings, 200 and some odd uh, for the ad spend. Approximately how many would be turned over to a credit repair company out of those numbers, just based from your experience? Mm, good question. Um, you know, I hadn't really looked because um, I actually, when I'm talking to them, I want to say, I'm just checking my memory because I didn't write it down. Generally, because I have a credit repair company, what happens is when I have a credit decline, I just transfer them right over to, to one of my consultants. I think I probably referred over out of those 120, it was probably only like four last month in yeah, November. Yeah, it, was probably, it was probably four. But like I said, it's 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 not limited to just your online you yeah. know, your on, uh, online lead generation. If you have someone who comes in for a mortgage, whether it was online or not, if they don't qualify for the credit, you have a relationship with, with someone who's going to pay you on a monthly basis, then you, know, you want to see them win. They want to see you win. Yeah, that's perfect. Especially if you're using a multimedia, multi-pronged, multi-pillared marketing strategy where you're using Facebook, Google AdWords, you're getting uh, leads from multiple sources, then they all feed into that same partnership. So that's a win for everybody. Uh, Another question that came in is from Mike Allen. Mike, my man, great to hear from you, brother. He said, Dorn, are you moving away from the Facebook ad campaigns and the Synergy CRM? No, we are not. As you may have heard earlier, Mike, I'm a big proponent of building stability through diversification. I'm all about generating leads that can convert and that can fill your pipeline and that you can use to add value to your partners by feeding them pre-approved buyers on a silver spoon and having as many different sources for a lead generation as possible so that if any one of those goes down or becomes uh, no longer viable, you still have a solid foundation. So I'm all about layering them together and having them work simultaneously. So obviously Facebook has a certain type of buyer, first time home buyer. We're trying to get them to scroll stop. We're trying to get them to fill in a form. We're following up by text, uh, text message, voicemail and email. We're doing our best to convert a good number of those into pre-approvals and closings such that it's actually profitable. And what I'm saying is let's do that in conjunction with, in addition to Google AdWords, because now if you're generating say five pre-approvals or seven pre-approvals from your Facebook campaign per month, and you're able to do the same, if not better with AdWords, and you're able to feed those pre-approvals to top producing agents to make you their exclusive, you're closing the deals, you're making the commissions, and you're feeding those uh, those deals to top producers to make them turn around and make you their exclusive lender, all the better, right? The more, the better. Building stability through diversification. So that's the big reason why we're doing this webinar because frankly, Facebook relying on that as a one-trick pony is a very precarious position. We're seeing how tumultuous it is. They're changing things all the time. People are getting their ad campaigns completely stopped and shut down or their ads not approved anymore. Or their ads are shut down for 
whatever reason and not turn back on for weeks or months, it's very precarious to rely on just one digital platform. So that's why we're doing this webinar with Brian because this guy is a total innovator, as you can tell. He's a very adept marketer. I trust him implicitly and he's getting some badass results. So why the heck not? So let Brian take you by the hand and literally do it for you. You know, thousands of hours of painstaking blood, sweat, and tears all done for you so you don't have to do it yourself. That's what really this is about. So hopefully that answers your question, Mike. Uh, I don't see any other questions. So if you guys have any lingering questions, this is the time to pose them or forever hold your peace until we reconvene again sometime in the future. You can certainly hit us up on Facebook. We're in the Art of Mortgage Marketing Facebook group. You can hit me up on Facebook as well. Brian's on Facebook as well. So you can hit us up, but uh, if you wanna get your answers to your specific questions now while we're here live, this is the time to hit us up. Yeah, if so I get, if it I looks like as far as that Facebook um, Facebook question was concerned, in that in our yeah. Facebook group, I'm going to show you. I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing, what's been working for me with the Facebook leads. Like I said it's more of a long-term game. You know, from my position, I'm treating it more as a long-term game. Let's let's say that I've been doing something that's been working. I've been you know, that's been converting more more of those people that weren't ready to take action right away that have gotten them pre-approved and into my pipeline uh, that i'll share with you exactly what i'm doing step by step give you all my my templates and everything so you can duplicate what i'm doing with the facebook what i'm saying i'm, I'm here to help you i mean i'm literally so not to go off on a tangent and, for, and during 9 11 i was a stockbroker i left you know the next day after 9 11 i looked in the mirror and it occurred to me that I was not happy with who I was. I, I didn't contribute anything to the world. So I decided that I was going to leave that, that industry and that no matter what I did moving forward, I want to have a positive impact on anybody who did business with me. I want them to, to you know, want to have an impact on their lives because that's to me is the way you measure success. In, in working with me in this Facebook group, it's my, I'm invested in making sure that you're successful. So anything that I can figure out that's going to help you more, get more closings, I'm an open book. So I'll, I'll do everything I can to help you. Love it, brother. And uh, that really comes down to, I'm sure, a big part of why you serve the country in the military is making a difference in something bigger than yourself, serving a cause bigger than yourself and transcending just going out there and doing something for yourself or your family, but being able to serve a, a higher purpose and a higher calling. And uh, another big reason why I've decided to, to partner with you on this project, brother, is because uh, we share uh, that common value of being a light in the darkness and making a difference in the world and serving humanities and liberating people from their suffering. And, you know, believe it or not, uh, a big piece of suffering that people feel in this business is the suffering that comes from struggling and worrying where their freaking next deal is going to come from and, you know, having too much month at the end of the money and the worry and the sleepless nights and all that comes from that is a real thing. You guys probably intimately are acquainted. Many of you guys are in that right now, the hellfire of the trouble and struggle of trying to grow your business and not knowing how, being stuck in the muck and mire, spinning your wheels, doing it the hard way and not knowing your way out. So we're here to serve you guys. And a big step for you, if you're on this webinar right now and you're wanting to make 2020 your best year yet, and you're not sure exactly how to get out of the muck and mire of spinning your wheels and being stuck in the same spot and a rut of stagnation, is to seek out help to invest strategically. And obviously this is a very, very, very nominal investment with just $100 non-refundable. So if you're feeling like, hey, what the heck? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. If you're if you're digging what, uh, what Brian's sharing and his story and the results he's getting, and you'd like to see if perhaps it would make sense to have him do all of this for you so you don't have to, just plug and play, stick your key in the ignition, drive away, then uh, let's, let's give this a shot. 100 bones, nothing ventured, nothing gained, fill in the application, and let's see what we can do together. If it doesn't look like a good synergistic fit, we'll just press the refund button and part as friends and it's all good, you know? But uh, if indeed it looks like a good fit, we're about to take you stratospheric if uh, Brian and I have anything to do with it and send you into orbit and make 2020 your absolute best freaking year yet and catch you on fire, catch you ablaze with qualified leads, best qualified leads you can ever get online, maybe second best to the local search on the Google map because of those five-star reviews. That's probably the creme of the creme, the absolute upper crust best for online leads. A notch below that is Google AdWords. So this is like, you know, the upper crust of qualified, quality, hot for what you got leads you can ever get online. And uh, Brian's the real deal. I wouldn't have him presenting this, this if I didn't know without a shot of a doubt, he's the real deal and he can help you guys. So any other questions, guys, before we sign off? Last call for questions going once. Last call for questions going thrice or twice, rather. I went to public school, so my math's a little off. 
going twice. And the last call for questions going thrice. We're Canadian, so you know we're uh, at least I am. Brian's uh, East Coast of the U.S. I'm up here in the cold white North, chewing on ho- ho- hockey pucks, watching hockey, chugging down beer, and uh, and drinking our uh, maple syrup. So sometimes it gets to my head a little bit. All this maple syrup. So forgive my Canadian second, uh, you know, second grade math sequence, but uh, nonetheless, that's why I have Brian, badass Brian, doing the technical stuff with uh, building out that code, because Lord knows if I'm having a hard time counting out one, two, three, I'm not going to be able to do all that techie propeller head stuff he does with building out code on pages. So that's why we do what we do best, and we get the best to do all the rest, y'all. I recommend you do likewise, dance in your strengths, leverage all the minutia to top talent. That's a game-changing game plan for 2020 if you have not yet adopted it, is you just do what you do best, you get the best to do all the rest and operate in your zone of genius. And that's my tie-in for, uh, you know, where I am weak, Brian is unique. So that's why I have him on the team. I'm super blessed to be able to do this project together. And I'm excited for you guys, for the ones who put down your deposit. I noticed several of you have already put down your deposits. So congratulations. Looking forward to uh, connecting with you. And Brian's going to reach out and have a convo with you and see what we can do with you uh, in terms of you know mapping out a plan to uh, set this up for you in 2020 to make your business absolutely launch to a whole new level in 2020 and beyond. Cracking the code with AdWords, baby. That's about the number one thing you can do for online lead generation this year, as far as I'm concerned, is getting the best quality leads with the best proven ads that work, with the best proven follow-up system that works. And we've got everything locked and loaded for you from A to Z on all that. So if you're looking for the best, the most proven, and the most adept system, being able to get the lead, convert the lead, follow up with the lead and incubate the lead. Brian and I got you. So that's all we got, guys. I don't see any other questions that have come through. Brian, thanks for hanging with us today, man. Thanks for having me. All right, guys. We'll be in touch. Hit us up if you have any other questions beyond this on Facebook. And uh, you guys have a absolute off the chain, healthy, wealthy, and full of abundant 2020. I want you guys to really think about this one simple principle before we sign off. Until and unless you guys start to get the vision that you have for 2020, your 2020 vision translated to your daily calendar, your daily agenda with champion level routines that produce those champion level habits and those champion level results that you want, frustration is the inevitable result. So I want you guys to bridge the gap gap between that which you know and that which you do. That's the biggest gap we have in life, the gap between that which we know to do and that which we want and should be doing and having it actually implement in our daily calendar. And one of the fastest ways to get it done is to get someone to do it for you. Get someone else to plug and play. Get someone else to take that action. Get someone else to implement, outsource, delegate. And that's the power of having someone else be unique where you are weak so you can have that execution done for you. We get paid on done, not begun. So I implore you, I encourage you, I hope that you guys feel inspired and motivated out of our conversation today to not just think about it, not just hope about it, not just wish about it, but to do about it by getting someone else to do it for you. That's the fastest way to implement And I want that to be on the front of your mind as you launch into 2020. How can I implement more? How can I get more done without me doing it? Getting other people who are dancing in their strengths, doing it for me. All right, guys, be blessed. It's been great to connect with you. I I trust you got value out of our conversation. Brian, again, thanks on behalf of our audience today for everything you do and everything you're about to do to help these guys crack the code with their Google AdWords. Thank you, brother. All right, my man. Be blessed, everybody. Love you guys. Have a great day. We'll be in touch. Peace. Happy New Year, everybody.